Well, welcome to the Boiling Point. We're with Steven Taylor again, uh, just carrying on from last week where we talked about the fire tube boiler. I thought, hey, let's go ahead and keep this going and we'll talk about the water tube boiler. And we just happen to have one back in our shop, of course, one of our rental units. Steven, let's talk about the water tube boiler and how the actual gases and it really just how it actually works. Okay, okay. maybe take us through. All right, get your burner sitting here. You can see the gas train on the front end here with the Maxon valves, uh, big wind box on these. Uh, the inside of the of water tube is completely different than a fire tube. Fire tube, you have a round Morrison tube. Uh, in a water tube, you got a great big wide box, big mm -hmm. rectangular box. It's you know this wide, this tall, the length of the boiler. So you have fire that comes out there. It goes down about two thirds of the way down the down the fire box itself, and then it just gases, hot gases from there. So the flame is actually about two thirds. Flames about two thirds the, the way box. down the down the, okay. that fire box, correct? Okay. And then it, it, it touches the rear wall, the gases hit that rear wall, and they turn. On this one, this is an O-type boiler, so it's got a mud drum on the bottom, steam drum on top, tubes around the outside. So that fire comes down that, that uh, uh, fire box, hits the rear wall, turns, and comes between all those vertical tubes that are on, on both walls. Comes all the way back to the front of the boiler and then out the stack. That's how the gases escape. Okay, now the real, the, the real difference in a uh, water tube and a fire tube is that the water is actually inside, inside the tubes. Inside the tubes instead of outside the tubes on a water tube. That's so correct. the water's inside the tubes, where's the steam? The, if, if you look at that uh, gauge glass up there, which is the ver two vertical pieces that have all the bolts on them, about three bolts up, that's where the water level is at in this water tube, mm -hmm. which is about a third of the way up that steam drum. So the rest of that big steam drum up there, you've got this much water in it, all the rest of it is what we call the steam disengaging area. So that's all steam in that steam drum. Okay, and why don't you touch a little bit on the, the, the bottom drum, which is the mud drum, and what that really serves a purpose yeah, for. Yeah, the mud drum is where all of the condensables, you know, any particulates that the water software doesn't take out, chemicals that are, that are solids, any of the solids that are in the water, they collect in the mud drum and then periodically, typically, once every four hours, once every eight hours, just to, it all depends on your water treatment. That is manually blown down and that stuff is just flushed out and goes out into to the sewer system or whatever system they have there to take care of that. Now we've got different styles of water tube boilers. As you said, this was an O. This is an O type. But then we also have a, a D. D type. And then you get up into a lot bigger boilers. You have A types, uh, open bottom types for solid fuels. Mm -hmm. In the rental industry, the O type is by far the, 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 the most prominent type out there, strictly because our center of gravity is the center of the boiler, so we don't have weight on one side. We can keep our dimensions small, and, and, and they make real, real good piece of equipment to move down the road. And typical boilers um, that are stationary are going to have a little bit bigger um, firebox. They're, they're going to be a whole lot bigger firebox, more heating surface area, just everything's going to be bigger on the stationary unit. We always talk about the rental boilers being uh, uh, hot rods on wheels, if yeah, you will. So, yeah. Well, let's talk, uh, move maybe into some refractory. I mean, on a fire tube boiler, we talked refractory. What is actually inside um, the box here? Uh, very little refractory inside of these, these boilers anymore. We'll have a little bit of refractory on the mud drum, a little bit of refractory on the, on the steam drum. That's more to seal that area where all those tubes are coming into the drum to seal that. Where we have a gas seal, that's what that's for, and to protect that joint where that uh, uh, tube is going through the drum itself. We don't want to overheat that, so we make sure we protect that. Um, and then the only other refractory we have in them, the rear wall is water wall, both side walls are water wall, floor and the ceiling. Most of the front walls are water wall. We have refractory right around the burner itself, so it's going to be, you know, three feet, four foot square. That's all the refractory that's in the walls of the boiler at all. What's actually keeping um, the heat uh, from just destroying the outside yeah, of these coming through uh, the sides here. that those interior walls have uh, w ligaments on them uh -huh. and those ligaments are welded solid to the tube and then that ligament is welded they're welded solid to one another so that you have a hundred percent sealed wall the only way the gases can go is either either one of those breaks mm -hmm. and the other way is it goes around the back and comes around the way it's supposed to so you get the proper heat transfer right now um, obviously we talked a little bit about the fire tube last year or last uh, last episode why are we going to use a water tube boiler? Because the footprint of the water tube to get the same capacity is a lot smaller. Mm. And, and that's in essence, that's what it is. I mean, mm -hmm. this is a, this is a 60,000 pound per hour boiler. This happened to be a 550 pound design unit to get a 60,000 pound fire tube mm -hmm. with this kind of pressure. It would be twice that long and 
15, 18 foot wide. It'd be a right. huge piece that you have to move by rail. You couldn't even move that up and down the road. Well, Stephen, what about pressures on a water tube boiler? Tell me the, the varying pressures on, on a water tube. Standard pressure on a water tube is 250. Uh, these rental units are 350. This one happened to be 550. It's a specialized unit. Water tubes are typically a lot higher pressure because, you know, you think about it, you take a two inch tube and you put 350 pounds in it, it's a lot easier to control that, mm -hmm. a lot thinner metal than if you have a diameter of 10 foot diameter shell and the metal gets that thick in order to hold the same pressure. That's the reason anytime you go into high pressure, you're going to be in a water tube type board. Give us some real exotic pressures of really what's out there. I mean, that, that may, that, I think that's oh, there's, really interesting. There's, you know, super criticals, 2400 PSI, mm. 2600 PSI, 2000 degree superheat. Those are super critical for, for power plants and that type of thing. Right. Um, big as a house, though. Big, I mean, it's oh, massive. Yeah, you know, bigger I mean, than houses. Yeah, 10 stories tall, just huge pieces of equipment. Right. How about uh, temperatures inside the boiler? What, what are we what are Inside we the fire there? box itself, we're still going to be in the same, same general uh, temperatures we are with the fire tube. Uh -huh. The thing we want to do is keep that flame temperature below 2,500 degrees. Above 2,500 is where, where you start forming thermal NOx, which is strictly the nitrogen from the makeup air. When it mixes and gets above 2,500, it starts creating NOx. So we want to stage that flame and keep that temperature below that 2,500. Mm -hmm. So we'd like to be in that 23, 20 feet, 350 on the flame. Mm -hmm. When you get to the rear wall, again, you're going to be back down to that 16, 17, 1800 degrees. Well, there you have it. Uh, I've got a simple explanation about a water tube boiler from Stephen. Uh, we've talked about the fire tube. Now we've got the water tube. Uh, make sure you go back in several issues. I know we were inside of this water tube boiler on yep. one of the boiling points that we've done, and you can really see what's inside there. So uh, we'll see you next time on the boiling point. Well, appreciate Stephen stopping by with us. A real simple explanation about the water tube boiler. You can see in the background of how many different boilers that we have, a lot of different sizes, um, whether it's fire tube or water tube, um, from 50 horsepower all the way up to 150,000 pounds an hour from a rental standpoint that we've actually got here. So uh, make sure that you come by and see us at Power Gen coming up in December. Stop by our booth, got a free t-shirt. And one other thing, go out and check out our new steam cultures that Brent is doing every week on Friday. He does a super job talking about steam and how it impacts our culture. He's got a new one every Friday. So make sure you check that out on our YouTube. Like us on Facebook, make sure you follow us on Twitter. If you don't mind, maybe share a video and subscribe to that YouTube channel for us. We'll see you next time on The Boiling Point.